This is The Wheel Weaves, a Wheel of Time podcast with no spoilers. Welcome listeners, I'm your host Danny, and I'm the first time reader going through this 15 book series chapter by chapter. As always, there's no spoilers past the chapter we're covering, and that means it's totally safe for first time readers. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, who's a longtime fan, and he's acting as my tour guide on this journey. We'd like to acknowledge and thank our executive producers, Brandy and Aaron Kirkwood, Andre the Man in White, and Chad Welsh. And before we get into things today, we have a new member of our Wheel Weaves Patreon team to welcome. So thank you so much to Matthew P. We really appreciate your support and your generosity. In this episode, we're talking about chapters 37 and 38 of The Shadow Rising. Yeah, so chapter 37, we have Imre Stand, which I had to look up to make sure I pronounced that correctly, and I did. <laughs> and chapter 38, Hidden Faces. Ooh. Yeah, it's kind of funny because Imre Stand is one of those words that I've seen a bunch of times, but I've never pronounced out loud. Yeah. And then I have that like fear that I'm just getting it completely wrong. Yeah, you're probably getting most things wrong. That's true, but it doesn't matter. It's not so. as bad as me, and we get a return of our favorite mispronounced character. Gleb, he's back. Gleb. Finally. <laughs> oh my okay. god, what's that guy been up to, hey? The re- return okay and these are long chapters they're long but they're fluffy they are pretty fluffy like the second chapter doesn't actually start until like 10 pages in yeah and then it's like every second page is actually important so mm. and i mean okay we'll, we'll talk about when we get there but okay yeah let's start with our fun fact okay about sweat lodges oh. because we got introduced to them last time and i didn't do the fun fact then but i want to do it now so i don't forget okay so RJ drew lots of inspiration from the IL for multiple cultures. We know that. And one being from some indigenous peoples of America. And I've got more fun facts about that later. But this one, I want to look up some fun facts about sweat lodges specifically. Because we got introduced to the sweat tents that the IL use. Yeah. Half sauna, yeah, half sweat lodge. Exactly. Yeah. It's not an exact comparison. But no, it's, it's kind of, it's drawn from for sure. Mm -hmm. So traditionally a sweat lodge is used for a spiritual ceremony within the structure and is sometimes called either a purification ceremony or just a sweat. And it's typically a low-profile hut, and it's either dome-shaped or oblong. Now, it is intended as a religious ceremony, used for prayer and healing, and the ceremony itself is only to be led by elders who know the language, the songs, the traditions, and the safety protocols, because it can be dangerous if you do it improperly. I see that, yep. Yep, and then lastly, the heat was often generated from pouring water onto heated rocks, and it's meant to encourage sweating out toxins and negative energy. Mm -hmm, because so. the one that I participated in, they burned several different herbs. Yeah. You yeah. know, like the sage and the sweet grass and that sort of thing. So it depends to if a female elder or a male elder is leading it because certain herbs are for certain genders as well. Like it's very okay. interesting. Yeah. 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 So not an exact comparison, but no. definitely inspiration. Mm -hmm. So I like it. Yep. Okay, so last time we had Egwene meeting up with Elaine in the dream world, which I actually found a neat way to tell us about what the other characters are up to. Yeah, without actually going into the perspective of Yeah, them. it's a neat narrative. Yeah. For sure. So Elaine and Nynaeve are still on the ship. Yes. Headed to Tanchico. Very close. Egwene got in trouble for her dream world escapades. <laughs> her adventures. Her adventures. <laughs> Avienda is spying on Rand and not doing it very subtly. Yep. And the whole crew is headed out of Ruidian and they just ran into some super sketchy peddlers. Yeah, you think they're sketchy. Oh, you. Okay. Yeah, okay. Rand also thinks they're sketchy. <laughs> yeah, but he's crazy. Yeah, he is crazy. <laughs> He yeah. is crazy, but I think, I don't know. He's crazy, but he's not wrong. Yeah. But is he right? So there's a whole lot of questions. There's a lot of stuff going on, and I don't have answers for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to get into it too, because there's a lot of good, good, juicy tidbits we can pull out of these Okay, chapters. let me tell you a prediction I had last time. Yeah. So chapter 37 is called Imri Stand, and the chapter symbol are the like Trolloc yeah. Spells. So right away, I'm on edge that there's going to be a Trolloc attack. Okay, so you're just waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. Yeah. And I have to tell you that the first thing that actually came to my mind when I saw this was, how are the Trollocs going to get here? Because we're in the middle of the waste. How is there going to be a Trolloc attack? And I was like, this yeah. doesn't make sense. Because That's... I'm trying to logic things out. Yeah. And 
the only thing that came to my mind was the Trollocs that got to Tyr were smuggled in. Yes. Right? Okay. They were all like, yep. I don't, I don't know how you train Trollocs to just like lie still under tarps and stuff. Yeah, just hang a, out in the back of wagons. But and such. apparently you can. Yeah. Oh, you just said it. Yeah, I just hang realized. Hang on the back just, of okay, what? Okay. Hang wagons. on the back of what? Yeah, because there was wagons. like wagons and barges, I think, in tier. Yeah. So you're thinking, but what's here right now? Except a train of like eighteen peddlers' wagons. True. True. So. Okay. Yeah. Are you saying that? Yeah. Yeah. Like right now, you're just like throwing okay, that out there. So that was my thought. Okay. Then we get into it. The Trollocs have already attacked, and I think, oh, what? What's so happening? So it's like Trollocs, but in the past. In the past, and then it's like then oh, they do attack. There's Trollocs here too, still. And or again. it seems like my prediction holds up. Okay. Yep. Okay. Let's let's revisit this at the end of the chapter when we get to that Trolloc bit. Okay. Because I need to like logic th- some things out for myself. Okay. Fair. Okay. Okay. You can't just like make accusations. No, I can. Oh, okay. That's <laughs> literally my job. So. <laughs> We enter into Rand's perspective. We're about a mile from Imri Stand, and they are stopping there for the night. Rand wants to keep going. Because yeah, there's still it's daylight still hours. Still daylight, but then he learns an IE lesson about how there's water. There's water. You stop where there's water. Period. Because you don't know when there's going to be water again. Yeah, or you do, and it's a really far way away. Right. Yeah. That too. <laughs> Plus, Ruark doesn't want to leave the peddlers behind, and Rand thinks it's some. Jindo, Shido rivalry about these yeah. peddlers. And he, he's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah. No, he, he's <laughs> right about that. Like, Rand doesn't fully understand why, but if Rurik left the peddlers with Kuladin, it kind of gives more power to Kuladin, and Rurik doesn't want to give Kuladin more power because Kuladin's a dick. Right. Okay. Fair. Yeah. Okay. So Rand laughs to himself at some point. Well, lots of points, actually. Yeah. But then he notices Matt looking at him oddly. And thinks, ugh, too much is riding on this. He has to take care of himself. Yeah. I was going to ask, like, is that anything? I mean, the weird laugh. And he tries to, like, look encouragingly at Matt. Yeah. But we've had this conversation where when you're in the perspective of the person, you think you're coming across a certain way. Yeah. And in Matt's perspective, it's like, what does Rand actually look like he's doing? Right. So here's the thing. We've gone back and forth between Matt and Rand enough times now i think that i know matt is thinking almost like a madman but he's not crazy yet okay so close but not quite (laughs) that's what matt thinks every time he sees rand like laughing to himself so we need to like wait for matt to switch that train of thought to just crazy crazy. now (laughs) yeah clearly crazy (laughs) okay yeah so avienda is also watching him probably because he's coming across a little crazy yeah and she hates him. Yeah, but he also notes that the glare in her eyes seems too personal. Yeah, and again... I picked that up. Again, this yeah. kind of comes back to your theory, and uh-huh. I don't 100% remember your theory. I don't either. Something There's about, too many going yeah. on. <laughs> it was something like, something about him in he the future saw, or the past. Yeah, she got super angry with him. Like, before she was very indifferent about him. Yeah. Like, I just... How can I not like you? I don't know you. Like, whatever. Yeah. Kind of. But then she comes back from Ruidian where she's potentially, we're led to believe she's seen her futures over and over. Yes. Yeah. And now she's like incredibly angry with Rand. So it's like a personal side of that future. Yeah. I have no idea what the actual yeah. future is, but it doesn't make her happy. You know, Rand's got this like good habit of making people not happy on a personal level so far. So I mean, yeah. it could be that. Sure. Not good habit. Just habit. Well, <laughs> you said good. <laughs> well, you know, it depends who's asking. I guess. <laughs> so the wise ones are not looking at him, and he's like, "Hey, I'm used to being the center of attention around here. What are they looking at that's so interesting? That's not me." Yeah, this whole thing is kind of weird to me too. Yeah, because they're looking at something sparkly, and we don't know what it is. Or well, that too, because I need to know what you think that it is. Well, I wrote in my notes, "Should I know what this is?" Because I don't. Well, we got to mention to it last time, too. Oh. This is the second time that they've mentioned that something sparkly or shiny, shiny that everyone's like... Shiny gem type Yeah, thing. that everyone's like crowding around and looking at. We got mm. that once before last Crystal time. Crystal ball. Okay. Type Going out gem. there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because we know that Egwene doesn't have the ring anymore. Right. 
because she gave that to oh, Elaine yeah. and Nynaeve. So yeah. it's like... This is all the like, wise ones are looking at it, though. Yeah, and yeah. everyone's... And it, it kind of is what centered is, around Egwene and Moraine is what, what is, the feeling is. Oh, I didn't get that. No? Okay. No, it was all the wise ones and them. Yeah, but... I thought it had more to do with the wise ones than Moraine and Egwene. It's just that they they were centered around the girls last time, too. So it's like, what's the real know. perspective? I don't know. And but, I want to move... Past. Okay, the other funny part about this was just the fact that Rand like hates being the center of attention, but he loves it. Yeah, he hates not being it too. Yeah. Yeah. Like he wants to be, but he doesn't want to be. Yeah, he's like, oh, worries me when I'm not the center of attention. It's like, what's more interesting than this guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Dragon Reborn and the Car Karn. <laughs> Show me some respect. Wait till he figures out that he's also the Cormor. Maybe. No, just kidding. He is. Okay. <laughs> It's Matt. Yeah, okay. We also get a side note here. Rand says that Egwene is the only person he feels he can trust. Yeah, maybe. And so I think she would have been a better spy, turns out. Yeah. Yeah, he puts a maybe beside that. Yeah, but I think that she could have. She could have been something closer to him. She could have. Yeah. But then you had a good point about how much would she share. Yeah. That's a good point. Well, that was in my point. I think that was Bear's point. Oh, no, Bear but you... was yeah. I, I highlighted the fact yes, that Bear had that thought. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Avienda tells Rand that this land will break him, and this will be a fitting punishment for how he treated Elaine. Yes. Like more of this. I more, love it. <laughs> more. There's so much of this. It's all of it. It's all of it. Yeah. So Rand tells her to show some respect to the Karakarn, and Ruark's like, "That ain't gonna happen." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that kind of sums up the entire relationship that all clan chiefs have with their people, I guess. Yeah. They just sort of like get it. Yeah. It's like, you can lead me when I want to be led. Right. And I'm not going to outright disobey you. Yeah. But I'm also not really going to like that you're my leader. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So Rand recognizes a maiden scout coming back. She ignores Rand completely because there is trouble at Imri Stand. Ooh, so that's the whole Trollocs thing you're thinking? Yeah, so okay. it looks like the wise ones already know what's yep. going on. And Rand wonders to himself, I wonder how they know. But that's nothing for me to think about now. Yeah. But I think dreams. Okay, okay. Yeah. But they're just talking about it now. Yeah. Versus would they be talking about it earlier in the day? No. Okay. Because now there's like confirmation. Yeah. Because they're never going to really outright talk about anything that they see because of that whole, it's not for certain. Yeah. And now something's wrong and it's likely that in maybe dream school. Yeah. Yeah. They saw some future thing. We also got the whole like dreams aren't like a, oh, there's going to be Trollocs at Imre stand. No. It's like, oh, there's going to be something. Death and destruction or something. Yeah. 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 (laughs) There might have been. I don't actually know. So. Yeah, yeah, All okay. Right. <laughs> so Rand asks Avienda what the trouble might be, and she ignores him, and then he snaps at her, and so she answers. Yeah. And she says, maybe a raid, but they're probably not going to have to do any fighting, because Rand has already embraced the power. Yeah, and yeah. It's she, not like an immediate threat. Yeah, she's like, no, they're already gone, and the goats have probably ran off and they've stolen the goats and now we won't be able to go recover the herd because we have to look after you. Yeah, this is kind of the whole concept of like in the Isle Waste raids happen and they're immediately assuming that it's just like they got raided, someone took all the goats and whatever, whatever, so the people are gone. Yeah. Not what happened. No. But, yeah. It is not. Yeah, not like immediate threat. No, and I found it interesting that she can like list off all the different societies that she thinks it like might have been and why. Yeah. Looks like a good understanding of Like she gets this it. This happens all the time, turns yeah. out. <laughs> yeah, these people are too far, but maybe these people could be yeah. these people. And Rand thinks it's weird that they're not gonna try to recover the captors or captives. Yeah, the guy shine. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, he oh, doesn't understand wouldn't you want to get yeah. that back them back? But no, they have to like serve for a year and a day. Year and a day. Yeah. I get it. You get it. I get it. The goats, however, do not have to serve a year and a day. <laughs> they might. I don't know. <laughs> so Ruark and the Jindo veil themselves and start running. And Rand like kicks his horse to follow. Matt looks over at the peddler's wagons longingly. And then follows. Yeah, he's not getting out yet. Yeah. So we get Imri stand coming into sight. We get few 
not very big buildings, like a few small buildings. Yeah, like I don't know what Rand was expecting, but it's not what he expected. No, there's not like cities here. and We've gotten that lots of times. Yeah, so. and the buildings are basically for defense, yeah. not for like living in. Yes, but what they find is not what they expected because there are still some goats here. Yeah, Pl- and if they got raided, there'd be no goats. Right, and it really seems like there hasn't been anyone here for days. Yeah. Because the goats are just wandering around by themselves. <laughs> So, at this point, the crew goes and checks inside a building, which has been ransacked, and it's covered in blood, like there's been a slaughter. Oh my god. And Rand grasps the one power, and he gets his fire sword in hand, and I just have a side note for myself here, that it seems like he's not really having any trouble getting it when he wants to. Right now, yeah. Yeah. Like... He's getting better. He's He's getting getting more proficient. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. No, that's a good thing to note. Yeah. So Avienda is super shocked. She's like, oh my God, who would do this? Where are the dead? What's going on? Yeah. And there's like, she doesn't think it's Trollocs because... No. Yeah. I mean, Trollocs don't hunt Aiel. This looks like Trollocs. Yeah. It actually reminds me of the Faldara... The dungeon? Dungeon. Yeah. Where there was like blood on the walls and yeah. stuff yeah and it's like dried black because that's how yeah. blood dries i guess so yeah but i mean i kind of get it from avienda's standpoint where she's like trollocs don't come here period especially not to hunt aiel that we doesn't happen hunt trollocs they don't hunt us yeah so uh oh yeah and so ran thinks nope this for sure was trollocs and it's not a coincidence that i'm here too he thinks maybe they will grow careless if they think I'm a fool. Yeah. And I just want to say, who's they? Who's they? Well, who yeah. is they? That's like the office joke, though. Yeah. Okay. No. <laughs> no, I get that. It's always the office. But who's they? Forsaken. Well, he thinks. He thinks it's Forsaken. He thinks it's Forsaken. Okay. It's probably the Forsaken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we got to come back to this whole land fear thing from last chapter. Right. Well, it's got to be sub forsaken obviously because it's trollocs yeah right like it kind of makes sense it's the only thing that makes sense yeah but it's like which ones are for which ones are against i don't know they all seem to be not you... working together and we sort of yeah. get that next chapter too oh yeah oh yeah so but i mean you also think that lanfear is in the camp with the peddlers yeah i do and is the and now let me tell you <laughs> about this situation this lanfear situation i can't decide who Lanfear is. Oh. And it might be all of them or none of them. <laughs> there's no really, there's no real way to it's know. It's uh, Spider Man pointing at each other. Yeah. Everyone's Lanfear. Every <laughs> time I met like a new character as we go through, I think, is this Lanfear? Okay, because last Lanfear? time you thought it this was Lanfear, this Keely, Lanfear. right? Keely. Okay. The fat one with the nice voice. Yes, because yeah. Matt was like, oh, it doesn't match her whatever. Yeah, appearance. and then she's like, powerful. Yeah. It's like a little different, but so now you think it might not be her. And then that was the misdirection maybe. this whole time, maybe. Maybe. Okay, okay. let's go. <laughs> let's keep going because I'll get to it. So Ruark signals everyone to move forward into Imri Sand. Everyone's on edge. They send out scouts like looking for like, I guess the Trollocs or Yeah, just make sure they signs don't get of snuck stuff. up on. Everyone sets up their camps. The Jindo with the peddlers, which pisses off Kuladin. Yep. And the Shido set up close by with the wise ones in between. Yep. Just like they were marching, pretty yeah. much. So Kader, beady-eyed Magubal, yeah, comes out of his wagon, <laughs> followed by this bitch. <laughs> right. The new one. Uh-huh. Or, the new, this yeah. one who also might be Celine, or like a Celine Lanfear type. Celine Lanfear type. Situation. Maybe she's all of them. Okay. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. So she's a dark-haired young woman in a red clingy silk gown Ooh, okay okay and she's weird she's like swaying and she's like something to look at but she's on this guy's arm yeah and, and kadir's kind of like a weird guy himself and he's the one with the shifty eyes that Rand doesn't trust yeah the hawk eyes so they go over to the building and when they come out Rand thinks that she puts on a show of being disturbed yeah which, again kind of weird yeah it's all weird. So <laughs> this girl and Kadir approach Rand, and she seems very interested in Rand, but then immediately insults him and leaves. <laughs> in like the most back end, <laughs> huh, I thought you'd be handsomer. <laughs> yeah, and then just like takes off. Yeah. 
And Kadir says that her name is Isandre. Yeah, or Isandra. Oh, Dre in the audiobook. I listened to it today. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Isandre. Yes. Nice. I think. Yeah. Now, See, that's the whole Imre stand that I'm like, I don't even yeah. know. Because <laughs> I don't think it matters. <laughs> I don't have time for this. I know. So Kadir apologizes for her being so forward and Rand notes that he has eyes like a bird of prey. Yeah. And I just want to note on page 601 in my copy, I have a typo. Oh, okay. And nice. it says the man's eyed never changed. And it's supposed to be the man's eyes. Oh, yeah. So mine's the a, same. a D instead of an S. Yeah. The man's eyed never changed. And it should be probably eyes. Eyes yeah, never Yeah. That would make a lot more sense. Yep. Okay. Hey. There it is. There you go. And it's not the last one I'm going to point out this episode. Oh, man. Bad chapters. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. So here's a crazy thing that I want to kind of just throw out there. Okay. So you think that, well, you don't think that. Lanfear, you don't exactly know which one she may be or may, is none of them an option too? Potentially. Okay. Because it is kind of like a misdirection. That was kind of the theme of the last chapter being named I don't think that Robert Jordan titled the chapter Misdirections as a misdirection for me. Well, I know you don't think that, I, but... I st no, I'm telling you, I don't okay. think that. So I do think that Lanfear was somewhere present... Sure. ...in this group. Okay. Whether or not she's, like, controlling them somehow... So here's a or, thought. Or, like, they're dark friends that are there for her and they're smuggling the Trollocs in. Yeah. Or she is there somehow because she can also probably be invisible. Like, I don't actually know what she can do. Yeah, I mean, we saw her as Celine, like, turning corners and disappearing, but... Rand seems to have locked on to Kadir pretty hard. Yes. He's like the guy. Is it possible that... Lanfear is him. Him, or they're like all forsaken or something like that. Yes. Or not. So it's like yep. all of them are forsaken, yep. none of them are forsaken, Lanfear is all of them. At least three Lanfear. of them are forsaken. <laughs> Lanfear is actually a wagon. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me get into this next part though, because Kadir says he heard Rand took Kalendor from the... Heart of the Stone. Yeah. And Rand says, don't believe everything you hear and only half of what you see. Yeah. And it's like, if he knows the word Kalendor, yeah. like, is that a then common enough, like, name to yeah. know? Yeah, he knows. So. And so, Kadir says, ah, but belief and knowledge pave a road to greatness. He does say that. And then that. he takes off. And I went, oh, is he Lanfear? Talking is about greatness? Greatness. That's the whole shit. If he had said glory... This Ooh. would have been case closed. Boom, hands down. Yeah, yeah. I get that. I get that. Okay. You crack a case. You don't solve a case. <laughs> okay. This case is just blown wide open, folks. <laughs> okay. All right. Avienda calls out Rand for looking at Isandre because he belongs to Elaine. Yeah, I love that so much. It's like such a funny quip. And the next part's even better. Yeah, let me read it, because okay. these couple sentences are so good. <laughs> Before the man had taken three steps, Avienda said in a low, hard voice, You belong to Elaine, Randall Thor. Do you stare at every woman who comes in front of your eyes? Or only those who go half naked? If I strip off my clothes, will you stare so at me? You belong to Elaine! I bet he would look. No, he probably wouldn't, no, actually. No, he probably would not. Yeah. No, and we then have, yeah. <laughs> the next line is so funny. He had forgotten she was there. <laughs> he's like, oh, <laughs> he's still there. And he goes, I don't belong to anyone. Elaine, she can't seem to make up her mind. Yeah, because of the whole letter controversy. And Avienda is working on like wrong information. Yeah. From what Elaine told are. her. Everyone, yeah, it's all bad. Everyone is always working on wrong information. Women are so confusing. Ugh. Oh, man. Goodness gracious. Okay. I like Rand's solution. I'm going to leave now. <laughs> yeah. Well, except for before he does that, Avienda feels the need to yell at him that Elaine has bared her soul to him. And he's like, what the fuck? Like, fuck this. Women are so complex. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so Rand goes to practice the sword with Lan. Yes. But he doesn't want to insult the Aeel, so it's like this interesting balance of like not using a real sword. 
Well, and it's also like, yeah, it's it's a very he wants to go practice a sword because he wants to get away from her specifically. Yeah, but it's also like super hot in the middle of the desert. Yeah. So while he's practicing with Lan, he loses his concentration because he's just tired and he sort of like lets his arm drop. Yeah. But I mean, they've been practicing for a while at this I point know, because like, let an me audience tell you, Brett, is... Let me tell you. Yeah. Okay. Typo alert. What? Again? Yep. Oh my God, where? Page 602. Okay. There is a typo because Lad says you must hold onto concentration even when muscles turn to water. And the typo is there is no D on the word hold. There's no D in my book either. And I didn't even notice that. Yeah. So it's just H-O-L. You, you must, must hold. hold onto concentration. Maybe that's a new term. I doubt it. Yeah. Anyway. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on, guys. Okay. Okay. All right. So there is an audience forming to watch them. Yeah, which is that weird controversy because it's like sword fighting, but I all don't touch swords because that whole tinker thing. Right. And I actually just skipped over this, but I want to mention it that Lan makes a joke. He does. And it's funny. Yeah, it is good. Because he says when you lose your concentration, that's when you die. And it'll likely be by a farm boy holding a sword for the first time. Yeah. And Rand's not a farm boy anymore. And it's funny. It's, it's funny good. Joke. It's a good joke. Yeah. Yeah. No, I appreciate Land's humor. It's there. It just doesn't come out all the time. Subtle. Yeah. Subtlety. <laughs> That's his game. So we also get Rand making a note of Keely and the Glee Man hanging out together. Yeah. And yeah. he doesn't want to let them catch him looking at them. Yes. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Okay. He's looking at them. He doesn't want them to see that happen. Yes. That's yeah. a better way to say that. Okay. Yeah. So Lan explains some Aiel battle tactics next. Yeah. So this is good. Yeah. But Avienda doesn't like this and says he's wrong. Well, okay. So kind of. Oh. Kind of. Then, well, she says that Ran shouldn't be asking how to fight the Aiel. He's supposed to be their leader. Yeah. So like she doesn't like that Ran's asking, how do I defeat Aiel? Because it's like, we're Aiel, you're supposed to be our leader of leaders. Right. Why do you need to learn how to fight us? But okay. then she's also pissed off because he's trying to get advice about how to fight Aiel from Lan, who's not an Aiel. Right. And it's like, who knows how to fight Aiel better than other Aiel? Right. They fight all the time. But Lan's not wrong. And that's when Ruar comes in. He's like, he's actually got some good points. That's a good way to fight the Aiel. Right. Like, he's a borderlander. They know what's up because we've, we've fought before. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, Evian is just like generally pissed off at everything that Rand does, no matter what. Literally everything. Yeah. Okay. So we get Rand figuring out something about Avienda for the first time. Finally. Yeah. Finally, he's not confused yeah. about something. He's like, Because of Rurark. Right. Who says that Avienda went to Ruidian for wise one training. Yeah. And she should stop sulking and tra tantruming like a child. Yes. That's not going to stop she's you. she's going to be a wise one. <laughs> yeah. Got to get past that. And then Rand wonders if she can channel. Yeah. And Even though not all wise ones can channel. That's true. But he yeah. wonders it because all women in his life seem to have the ability except for... Min. Min. Yeah. But she has something going on. She's got a superpower. She's got a It's something. still cool. Yeah. So Ruark has actually come to teach Rand the spear and Rand is super tired and it's really hot out, but he accepts anyway. This is important because now he's like got a whole audience yes. of his new Aiel people watching him train with something that's like prohibited. Yes. Prohibidado. Yes. So he can't say no to Ruark because he also wants to like be a leader to these people. Fair. And we get another land joke because Rand's like, hey, that whole mountain oh, yeah. well, is Rand pretty says heavy. <laughs> that mountain gets heavy sometimes. And Rand says, well, like, when can you put it down? Yeah. And Lan says. When you die. When you're dead. <laughs> That's a good land joke, too. You know what? Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. It's like that saying, you can sleep when you're dead. Exactly. That's what it's like. Hilarious. Yeah. Love it. All right. So we get a perspective change. We switch to Matt. Yeah. Who is watching the Aiel watch Rand. Yeah. And he it's thinks like Rand time. is freaking crazy right now because any sensible man would find some shade. Yeah. That's what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. And drinking a warm beer. Yeah. Which yeah. is like the worst. Yes. But is it better than no beer? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Okay. 
So Matt notices Kuladin and Kadir have their heads together for a long time. Yeah, I want to ask about this one. Yeah, because from Matt's perspective, he's kind of stupid and innocent. And he's like, oh, they didn't come to a deal because Kuladin leaves empty handed and Kadir stares hard after Kuladin. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of like it looks like an exchange. It kind of reminds me of like a back alley drug deal where you're like you you're observing something going on. Yeah. You're like you don't see anything pass between people, whatever whatever. So Yeah, but Matt I think is just like, "Oh, Kader didn't have anything that Kuladin wanted." Yeah. So what's to... happening there? What's what's happening I don't in this know. conversation? Something, something interesting. Something interesting is happening there. Okay. Yeah. Is it just like a a no deal on some weird peddler stuff? Or is it like a nefarious? It's nefarious. Okay, super bad. 100%. And it might just be like Kuladin being like, hey, come only trade with the Shido. I can see Kuladin doing that. Yeah. Like, hey, man, I'll bring you to a way better hole than this dumb cold rocks. Yeah. And my prediction is we never hear about this (laughs) ever again. So it doesn't matter. I sure hope so. That's so funny. Okay. So Matt thinks about the trade between the peddlers and the Aeol. Yeah, this is good world building. Mm -hmm. I like this. Yeah. So they don't really exchange money or like coins. But they have lots of trading of stuff. Yeah, they got loot. And like gold nuggets. They just raided the Stone of Tear. Oh, right. They got all sorts of good loot. And they melted down lots of stuff, yeah. probably. Well, oh, that's kind of the point. Is like That's how they get the gold nuggets, is yeah. they melt all the crap down. Yeah, like okay. they're not dumb. And that's kind of what Matt is observing. They're not dumb people with like way more money than they've ever had because they, they have an economy. Like they're not the savages that they're portrayed as in, yeah. the, like, in the Westlands. So Fair. Yeah, and then we got like the books go first to people who want to buy them. They buy all the books, which is pretty cool. We get a little world building about silk and ivory not being sold because they get that from the east in China. China basically yep. is where it is. Shara is China. So, and then like some metal work goes quick, like needles and pins, but pots and knives, obviously, the IEL do it better. So, and then wine and brandy go for good prices. And most importantly, no two rivers tabak. Yeah, her and asked for two rivers tabak, and that's what I was talking about. It's like they don't have any two rivers is not some backcountry little town. No, but it I is wonder, world renowned. You know what? I wonder if it's one of those things that people just assume that two rivers is like the brand name. Yeah, I love that you too. Know? Yeah, <laughs> like lots of things in our life. It's that pineapple express, I get it. Because <laughs> it's a weed joke. Yeah, exactly. I get it. Yeah. I was going to say like Kleenex. Yeah, that, that works like too. Like regular things that go by the brand name. Yeah. That have made it famous. Nope. But that Two Rivers, Tavik. That's just what it is. Yeah, there's none of it. All right. So Matt eyes a gold crossbow with rubies. Ooh. And it's not as good as a Two Rivers crossbow. And then he starts thinking about some battle strategy. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Not as good as a Two Rivers longbow. 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 Okay. Oh my God. Okay. Okay. Well, I misread it. (laughs) That makes way more sense. Yeah. So I was like, when do they use crossbows in the Two Rivers? Never. They never do. They use longbows. (laughs) That makes way more sense. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, into the actual good stuff. Yeah. The actual good stuff. Because this this is good. Yeah. So Matt starts thinking about some battle strategy and then he thinks, oh, it happened again okay at this point when you're like it happened again yeah where you're like what no no okay i assume that these things have been going on in his head for like a long time okay since he got out of ruidian okay because we haven't been really in his head since then well and it's not it's not clearly defined what is happening here uh it is it's like medium it's 100 percent. it's way more clear in like a couple of pages oh yes so oh yeah so he thinks that he wants to go home to figure things out, but then he knows that that actually won't help at all. He thinks about his like doorway Terangriel experiences. Yeah, the answers, the wishes. Yeah. And before Ruidian, Matt's memory was full of holes, and now there's something in between filling those holes. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's so good. Now, isn't that what I said? Yeah. I predicted this, right? Well, sort of. Sort of. It's a little different than what you thought it might be. No, it's not. 
I mean, it's a li- your thought process was that you think that his memories or whatever would be filled by the Manetheran general. And is it not? It's not because he says it's like a hundred memories from a hundred different men. Okay, but also from the Manetheran general, and that's the one that stands out the most. Okay, well, that's what I'm saying. I would saying. say that this is pretty on point. For me. It's really good. It's really good. I got to give you that. It's not exactly the same from what he describes here right now. Yeah, because he says mostly the battles like stick out the yeah. most to him. Yeah. And he's got like other stuff of like dancing and, you know, Dances, streets battles, and cities. Streets, cities, yeah, 100 yeah. memories from 100 different men. But it's the battles that he really remembers. Yeah, so I'll definitely give you points. The only thing I want to like add to it is the fact that it does seem like it's not just the one dude's memory. It's not just the one life he's lived. He's got other stuff filling in the holes in his memory. Which, when you think back to what he asked for, is kind of what he asked for. Yeah, he's not when he smart. Wished it. Yeah. yeah. He was like, I want the holes filled. And they're like, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, this is way better. Yeah. So Matt realizes that he knows the old tongue and can read it fluently. Yeah. And speak it fluently. Yeah. Because he says, I am lost in my own mind in the old tongue. And turns out that Glee Man is like standing right there. Yeah. Before we get into the Glee Man. Yeah. I just want to play a recall game with you real quick. Do you remember when he went through the doorway in tear to the snake people? Do you remember what they called him when they were trying to get him to leave? Gambler. Yeah, they said gambler. Trickster. Trickster. And one more. This is really good. Soldier? No, that one's wrong. I don't. They said go to Ruidian, son of battles. Oh, son of battles. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yep. Okay, so the Glee Man shows yep. up. He's here. He's overheard. Matt speaking the old tongue. And he sits down to have a conversation. Matt covers up the whole old tongue thing. And the Glee Man just goes along with it. Yeah, yeah. And we get an introduction to his name. Yeah, Jason. Yeah, Jason Natale. Okay. Natale. Yeah, and he doesn't flourish like Tom does. Yeah, he's not the I mean, that makes sense. Not all Glee Men are the yeah, same. Yeah, except that I'm suspicious. I'm suspicious of everyone. Of the Glee Man? Yep. Oh, okay. He's sharing a wagon with Keely. That's true. Okay, okay. Yep, and it's weird. Sure. It's all weird. I mean, I guess so. It's weird. Okay. I was just thinking about the difference between this guy and Tom also. Tom's a court bard. Yeah. So there's like a difference there as well. Sure. But anyways, okay. I'm still suspicious. Suspicious. He's also Lanfear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. No. Just buddies. (laughs) Buddies. Buddies. buddies, Okay. Yeah, buddies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's not Lanfear. Okay. Probably. Okay. So just with the Gleeman, is there something like specific... That's suspicious. Nope. Like something he says or just like generally he's here. He's He's with these people. So suspicious. Guilty by association. Okay. A hundred percent. Okay. You're telling me I shouldn't be suspicious of anyone with this weird group. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just wondering if there's like something that he does or says, or he's just asking for stories from Matt. Who's like a non Aiel who went to Iridian. He's looking for information. Yeah. Because he's a gleeman who no, wants to tell stories. No, that's a nice. That's a nice ruse. Good cover story. It's a great. He's undercover. Okay. He's undercover <laughs> gleeman because he kind of sucks at being a gleeman. Does he really? Yes. Yep. Well, okay. Yep, he does because he doesn't automatically go to get his harp to he's sing. He's not exactly like Tom, and no? like, I get that, but <laughs> I'm suspicious. You've met one gleeman before. I'm suspicious. Okay, let's continue. Yes. So Jason thinks that Matt has had an interesting life. And he will make stories of Matt's experiences and make him the hero. But Matt doesn't want to be a bloody hero. Yeah. So Matt tells a super watered down version of the story of them going to Ruidian. Yeah, he leaves some stuff out. details. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. And then Keely approaches and is pissed off at Natil. What's his, how do you say his name? I like Jason better. Yeah, Jason Tail. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The Gleeman. Turns out this isn't what he's supposed to be doing. They're not here for Ruidian. And I think, ooh, what are they here for then? Well, you tell me. What are they here for? I don't know. Peddling. Nope. No, they aren't. Okay. No, well, they aren't. Let's so fast forward. now the night falls. Matt eats at Ruark's fire with Heron, Rand, Avienda, Kadir, Isandre, Natil, and Keeley. Yeah, so basically everybody. Everybody, which yeah. seems weird. Whatever. Rourke asks 
Jason for a song while they're around the fire. And I think, you know, a good Glee man would have just okay. been doing this already. Yeah, that's the bad Glee man part that you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. So he gets up to get his harp and he starts strumming away and he sings a song and Matt notes like he's not that good, I think. He's like, oh, I don't know. Okay. He could No, be I get what you're saying. I mean, okay. Okay. So yeah. anyway, he sings a song, an old song about the battle of Menethrin or some battle of Menethrin before the Trolloc Wars. Yeah. And Matt- Midian's Ford. And Matt thinks- that's not how it went. Yeah, this is kind of funny because we get like a whole thing like that covers a couple pages about, about what the story actually was. Yeah, and it's pretty good. It's pretty good because like... So the song's about... Yeah, generally like bad guys attacked Manethra and they went out to go fight them. They were going to try and break through the ranks of the bad guys to kill the commander king of the bad guys. Didn't work, but then... They were so courageous that the bad guy king let them go back to Manetherin and live. Gotcha. But Matt remembers it, and that's the key word is he remembers and has the visions or whatever you want to call them, memories yeah. of the dude who it did not end that way for him. Yeah. They got sent back, but then got like an ambush and they all got murdered. And like drowned in a river or something weird. Yeah, they all okay. got like gunned down by arrows and stuff, so. Shot down by arrows? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, anyway, this pisses Matt off, and he thinks, this is way worse than Holes. Yeah, <laughs> it's like now you can actually relive, but that's the thing, too. He has the memories of a guy who got killed, and he, like, remembers the dying part of that. Mm -hmm. So, like, that can't be a good feeling it's for like Matt. It's like a past life regression. Except that it's, like he says, it's like his current memory, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's not good. No. So then Jason asks Rand... If he enjoyed the story, because Rand is sitting there all sulky. Like, Just like Matt. Yeah. And Rand answers, you know, he's not certain how wise it is to depend on an enemy's generosity. Not bad. What do you think, Kadir? Yeah. Okay. Again, the Rand's got it out for this Kadir guy. Yeah, he really does. And so Isandre and Keely also have this like weird moment exchanging some kind of looks. Yeah. It's all kind of weird. I'm suspicious of everybody. Okay, so that's the everybody everybody's bad guys. Everybody being weird up in here. Okay. And Trollocs pour in. Yeah, cue the Trollocs pouring in from the night. And I went, there it is. Yep. Because I was thinking, like, to to have the Trolloc symbol and to not, like, see the Trolloc attack. Just, like, aftermath, but yeah, sort of. Yeah, it seemed of. weird. But anyways, here they are. There's also Merdral. The Aeol are really good. Matt thinks about how... He was almost done for a bunch of times and miraculously survives. Yeah. Did you get that his spear gives off the same flashing of any power weapon? I did weapon? get that. Okay. Yes. When fighting the Fade's blades. Interesting. Yeah. Yes. 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 And then it's over. And that was a fast fight. Yeah. So Rand comes to find Matt and Avienda is there because she's following Rand around everywhere. And turns out everyone is all right for the most part. Yeah. Like generally speaking. Yeah. Ruark has some news because about 50 Trollocs attacked the Wise Ones and Moraine did a good job there. Yeah, hurry for Moraine. She like defended a bunch of the Wise Ones. Yeah, I wonder if Egwene helped. Yeah, I would bet. Like, okay. She probably thought to herself, I could have done that too, Moraine. I'm much <laughs> stronger than you and better than you are. But I mean, Egwene probably did some damage. Like, she knows how to throw down in a fight. She learned stuff being a uh, Shanchan, like... Captain? Slave, basically. Yes, yeah. she did. Like, she didn't learn nothing. Yeah, so. I'm interested in that. Okay. Now that we talk about that. I didn't write that down, but... I like that. I am interested in that. Yeah. We also get that the Shido were attacked, but with, like, a much smaller force. And Rand thinks that this is probably, or this was probably, to prevent all of the Shido from coming to help the rest of them, the Jindo. Yeah, and it kind of, like, also he's thinking that for the wise ones is what he's thinking. Right, so the wise ones didn't come to their aid. Because the they didn't attacked. come yeah. to their aid. And Rurik has a good point, like, hey, even if there weren't Trollocs attacking the Shido, would they have come because those sneaking Shido? Yeah, but it's yeah. a sophisticated plan of attack. It is, yeah, it is. Right, and then that also leads me to believe, like, where did the Trollocs come from? Yeah, that is also a good question. Because... Where do they come from? The Where do they go? Cotton Eye Joe? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, so bad. 
Because, so here, my Trollocs in the Wagons sure. okay. didn't really make sense when there had already been a Trolloc attack. Yeah, okay. But then they're here, and there was a Trolloc attack, Yeah. and Matt notes that all of those people stayed in their wagons during the attack, and he thinks, oh, those fools could have been easily killed. Yeah, but how would the, uh, like this many Trollocs like inconspicuously come out of, there's only about 18 wagons. And like how many Trollocs can you fit in one wagon? I don't know. 50 attack the wise ones. Right. Smaller force attack the Shido, but still more. It's like, it seems like there's too many Trollocs to come out of wagons. I like guess. I get, I love the theory. Yeah. It's good. It's just not quite good enough. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have anything else. That's the only theory. A series of tunnels throughout the, the waste. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Okay. I don't know. It's hard to say. It okay. is very okay. hard to say. But Ran tells Ruark that he brings his enemies with him wherever he goes. Yeah. Makes sense. And then Ran says some weird stuff to Matt. You can't win if you can't play and you can't play if you're dead. Yeah, who's who's to say what the peddlers are playing? Yeah. It's it's altogether like a really weird And then he laughs and then Matt goes to bed. It's 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 so weird. Yeah. Especially from Matt's perspective. It's like what the hell is he talking about? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and yeah. It's all weird. Maybe I'm, Rand doesn't even know. I really think Well, <laughs> he seems to know a lot that he doesn't really like let on. Sure. Like, he definitely thinks that these are the Forsaken or some of them. He definitely thinks these are his enemies who are following him. Which makes sense. Like, that all makes sense. That is not a coincidence that they're in the middle of the waste and they got attacked and there was an attack. Yeah. Where he's going, where he's, like, going to be. Like, that all makes sense that it is for sure because of Rand. And he points that out with his sarcasm yes. to Moraine, who's like, hey, I'm pretty sure this is because of you. And he's like, oh, really? Oh, you think? Oh, okay. This yeah. is surprising news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because we get a perspective change yeah. to Rand. Moraine is checking Rand over. She tells him this attack was aimed at him. Egwene comes in to tell Rand to stop upsetting her. But she's talking about Evienda, I think. Yeah, it's kind of like a weird one. Yeah. Rand is more tired than he's ever been. Uh -huh. And the sword almost didn't come this time. And he hopes it's tiredness. He has had a lot. Like, if you, if you recall what they've done, they traveled. They did the peddler bit. He practiced with Lan, and he was tired then. Then he practiced with Ruark. Yeah. And they went to, like, all that stuff, and there was a Trolloc attack. Like, a lot has happened today. Yeah. Okay. Because then Avienda is there when Ran goes to sleep, and she's there when he wakes up, and he thinks that he's glad to see her, even if she is a spy, because at least he knows what she feels for him. <laughs> and it's anger. H hatred and anger. Yeah. 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 And that's the end of this chapter. Yeah. So we got some stuff. Yeah. Okay. I want to jump right in. Okay. Because we get serious tone shift. Yeah. Everything's different. Everything is different. It's a weird, weird chapter. Okay. It's a weird chapter. I picked up on quite a bit. Okay. I think, anyway, because I li read this chapter, I read it again, and I listened to it. Wow. That's a lot of prep. I have one question yeah. before we jump into it about okay. this chapter. Okay. So just with the fact that the chapter symbol yes. is the faces. Dark friends. Dark friend symbol. Yeah. Is everybody in this chapter that we see perspective from, is everybody a dark friend? Potentially. Okay. We know for sure Keridin and Leandrin. That's what I'm asking. So it's that other one. Aginan. We've seen her before. We yeah. can talk about her when we get to her. I don't think she is. Interesting. Okay. I know she's working for Suroth. Yes. But who is a dark friend. I also, I also halfway through the chapter thought she was Suroth, so that I had to start the chapter again. I was very confused. Oh my god, okay. So, I mean, <laughs> there's lots going on. I think that if she was a dark friend... Sure. We would have had, like, more dark friendy I thoughts? I would have had or... more dark friendy thoughts from yeah, her. Yeah, okay, I get that. I didn't get any... I didn't get that feel from it's her. Just, it's just... It's She's like... very Sean Chen, and she hates everybody who's not Sean Chen. True. And she hates Aes Sedai, like, she hates channeling women... She hates all of that. Like, she's very Sean Chen. Yes. But I don't get Dark Friend from her. Okay, I had to ask because he got the symbol and then it's like a bunch of perspective changes. So I have to like throw it out there. But yeah. Yeah. 
she's meeting at a place where a lot of dark friends seem to be meeting. It seems like just like the bar that they all hang out at, so. Yeah, okay. So it's called Hidden Faces. Yes. Dark Friend Sybil. And we enter in Tanchico, but not with who you'd expect. Yeah. Because I have to tell you. Not the arrival of the girls. I saw Tanchico and I immediately thought, oh good, we're getting where the girls are. Yeah. No. Because that's supposed to be like two days out. We get a hint. We'll see. A little bit. So, we also get a map. We do. So much stuff happens. It's exciting. Yeah. We also get that Tanchico is suffering. Really bad. There are all sorts of people coming in and out for lots of different trading. And we're going to enter here on some place, like some lounge for secret meetings and drinking wine called the Garden of Silver Breezes. And all the people are masked here. Yes. And I have to tell you, my current yeah. <laughs> pandemic <Life experience. laughs> brain went to, you know... You know what's so funny? Face coverings. Well, but... in like the description, it's like the tables are spaced out and the people are masked. Yeah. And it's like, oh, they're social distancing. That's yeah, good. Yeah, and like... there's like walls between all of the tables. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like top half of the face is masked. Yeah, it's like masquerade. <laughs> yeah. Masquerade ball masks. Not like bottom half, so... Yeah. But relevant and hilarious. It's, yeah, it's... A, I mean, like, we laugh instead of crying. But yeah, yeah it's yeah. one of those situations. <laughs> so we start off with Egyanin. Yeah, it's a play between, like, Egyanin, Egyanin... When I listen to it... Yeah. Egyanin. Yeah, it changes, I'm pretty sure, in the audiobooks. Where later on, it goes to Egyanin. Yeah, it's just easier to say. <laughs> Egyanin. So pick what you want. Yeah. And it doesn't matter. Okay. I'm going with Egyanin. Okay. I like it. Okay. So, she is sitting here. She hates everything about this place. She is not a Terraboner, and it later gets revealed that she is Shan Chen, sort of undercover. Yeah, well, we've met her before. Yep, I remember that. You don't remember meeting her? No. We've met her before. Oh. She's the one. She's the ship captain who captured Bale Dahman. Oh, I was wondering how she knew him. She captured him originally way back in the Great Hunt. And she's the one who took him to Tarek? Turok. Turok. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. There's like a and whole like history. Found his stuff. Uh huh. Yep. Uh -huh. All that stuff. That's the one. This is the one. That's why she avoids him when she sees him here. Yeah. Because he knows who she is. I did not get that. Okay. So that's important. Because I, at first, so I read the first like three pages of this and I had to stop and go back. Okay. Because I was like, I am not paying close enough attention. Like, I have no clue what's happening. I had no idea what yeah. was going on. I yeah. like just straight up. It was so confusing. Yeah. Because then I was trying to figure out who she was. Okay. For a while. So we know that. <laughs> and now we know who she is. Yes, we and know I who she is. know that. That's okay. We can keep going with that's it. that's the Great Hunt, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That was the Great Hunt. Okay. That was a long time ago. Okay. So, okay. So it's not impressive that I figured out that she's Shan Chen. <laughs> You should have already known that. Because I had all these like things like, oh, she speaks of the blood, capital B, and she has um, the fast speech of everyone here that That's she doesn't like, so she funny. has a slurred speech. Well, you know what? If you didn't remember it, then it's new to you, and good job on yeah, figuring it out. Yeah, I figured it out. It out. Yeah. I was like, oh, she's growing her hair out, and she wants She is. To, she is she, undercover. She misses being... a in command on a ship because she's a ship captain oh my god i picked out all those things <laughs> and remember when bail dumb was like oh my god it's a woman <laughs> yes i do yeah and then he imagined like a bunch of amazon oh, warrior type yeah yeah because yeah. she had short hair and she even had yeah. like pants on and okay. he was like are you i sedai and she like backhanded him it was like a whole deal i remember i didn't i can't remember that scene that's the whole her thing. that's the one not her name though yeah all okay. right okay cool, cool 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 good cool starting out good real start <laughs> Okay. Okay. If anyone wonders if we talk about the chapters before we record, we do not. <laughs> we do not. Okay. So she also doesn't like that this place has no rules or order. Yes. So she is meeting with our favorite ma wrongly accused <laughs> <laughs> second on a ship. Or okay. What just is he? In He's case you forgot, guy. we've all yeah. we also know who Gleb is. I do know. Yeah. Yeah. He was the wrongly accused guy. He was. Although it was like a maybe wrongly accused. I think he accused. might be a dark friend. He was sleeping on. Oh, you think Gelb is a dark friend? Maybe. Because remember I thought Bale Doman was? Yeah, you did think that. You because thought everybody they're, they're was. they're being followed by Trollocs the whole way. But it turns out it's because he probably had 
the seal for the Dark One's prison mm. that Not Turak... Not probably. He did have that. He did have that. And then Turak got that. And I think he had another one. And then Moraine got them. And they're broken. And they're broken. Are they both broken? They might be. Anyways, that's the point. I think they're both broken because it was a big deal at the end of the Dragon Reborn. Yeah, and she's like, oh no. When the seal wasn't broken. Right, okay. So, Gelb, who did get wrongly accused, but he also was sleeping on the job and he shouldn't have been, so. Yeah, and he hates Randall Thor. Yeah. Mm, He hates Randall Thor because he got him fired. All right, so she is meeting with him because she is consistently meeting with greasy little men. They are figuring stuff out for her, finding stuff out for her, yeah. collecting things for her. A dam. Yep. So he has a bag with an a dam in it. So that's the bracelet and leash. Yep. And collar. Yes. And this is the third one that he's recovered for her. Yeah, more than any of the and other so people. So he gets a gold star. Yep. And a reward. Bag of money. Yep. Plus, he has been looking for some women for her. And doing a bad job. Yeah, because there have been some mistakes. And he she... may have kidnapped one of them off the street. A noble woman. <laughs> and then, like, she got sold into she slavery or get... something. Uh, no, she killed her, I thought. Oh, maybe. I think it was... No, I, I thought think... she had to die because she... No, I think she said she didn't have to die and she like sold her off or something. It, any, either way, it's bad. Oh, I thought she had died. Okay. At this point in the chapter, yeah. I'm still not 100% who this woman is. Okay. So we're, so like get into my mindset for a yeah, second. Yeah, for sure. Take a, Who's this mysterious woman? Come on in. Take a seat. Okay. <laughs> in my brain. And I think that she is for sure looking for someone we know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So okay. I think that she's looking for like like the girls. Yes. Maybe? Okay. Because I figured out at this point she's Shan Chen. I like that theory. And I know that the girls escaped, mm-hmm. right? And then maybe she's working with Leandra, like Suroth was. Like for that, sure. Like that was my whole thought process. And she here. is working with Suroth, who we know is a dark friend who is working with. Landrum. so it all that well, all no, connects they weren't working together they were they on the, the same, same master yeah. and they sort of had a plan together that's only sort of worked co-working together it didn't work no no <laughs> anyway so the main point is i thought she's looking for like our main women but it turns out not okay at the end we figure that out yeah but we'll yeah. get there so we get an insider tip from gelb Yep. I you nev- did it. I never know which one it is. You did it. About the city of Tanchico choosing a new Panarch. Yes, which is going to cause a whole bunch of shit whole in bunch Tanchico. Of shit. Yeah. So she dismisses him and then... I have a question. What? Do you remember the hierarchy ruling class of Tanchico? Well, we had a, a lesson. Panarch and a king. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure you're on the same page. And they're like equals? Sort, sort of? of equals. Yeah. Elaine did a whole list- lesson they about it. They so. are in charge of different things. Yes. Day-to-day tasks. Correct. Big picture. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so she dismisses Gelb and then notices a sea folk raker pulling into the harbor. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So Let you think that's... Let me tell you who's on that raker. Oh my God, it's the girls. Yeah, it is. And the boys. And the boys. Yeah. All of them. So she goes to leave, but then sees Bail Domin coming in. And she sits back down and thinks, oh, he won't recognize me. I've got this dumb mask on. And he might have to be dealt with if he becomes more trouble. Yeah. And I that makes so much more sense now. When you know that she's the one who captured him previously. Oh, my God. And he did not care for that. That's just like the little brain exploding emoji. Uh-huh. Okay. Because, gosh. Boom. Boom, because I was like, yeah. oh, what dealings have they had together? Right, because he deals with some unsavory characters. Which we get later. Yeah, yeah. So not anything we don't know. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so she leaves and outside she sees Jacob Carradine going into the place. Oh my God, all the dark friends are hanging out here. Yeah, so she hates the children, but she also seems to hate everyone. She doesn't like them because of their like unstructured structuredness and so and much power. She's they have so much power. A military presence that answers to themselves. Obviously, that's a bad thing. Yes. And she gets that because the Shanchen are incredibly disciplined. Yes. Yeah. Yep, that's true. Even if you don't like them, they are very disciplined. Yeah. And we their... also get that the King's Guard is like too busy with all of the poor people everywhere. Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of poor people. There's like civil war on the, the brink of there's like famine. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of... It's all bad yeah. in Tenchiko. And now, do you want the third typo of this episode? 
I do. Okay. So this one I actually took a picture of and posted in our Discord. Oh, excellent. Because on page 621 of my paperback copy, there's a little sideways at. I have that too. So yeah, the little at at is like sideways in yeah. the middle of the sentence. And I don't understand how printing works because how no, does it happen? I find it interesting that it, all of these typos are also in your book. Because I'm pretty sure they're significantly different editions. Yeah. I think your book is much newer than mine. Yeah, yeah. So and we've had a few where it's like a typo in one, but not the others, so. Yeah, but that one specifically, and mine also has like an A randomly in the margin, but yours didn't have that. Yeah, again, I don't understand printing. Weird. Yeah. Cool. Almost as interesting as what's happening in this chapter. Okay. So <laughs> the Terra Bombers <laughs> are in the street looking terrible and she thinks that she is overstepping her place supporting a soup kitchen as if she's one of the blood yeah they are charitable yeah but she thinks that she would get in trouble if anyone found out that she was acting in a position that she's not quite yeah like above above her station yeah right because crossing into that when you're not allowed to they are super strict on their class classism. Yeah. 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 So she hates being here. She hates all of this. And she just thinks, why is the high lady Suroth holding back? Yeah. She's hanging out in the ocean. Yes. On them islands. Yes. We saw her. Yeah. But we also get that this undercover Shan Chen lady is collecting things, finding things out and reporting back to Suroth and knows Suroth is there and wants her to come invade again yeah. because she hates this place so much. Yeah, and the, I mean, say what you will, but the Shanchen will provide some level of order to all these people. Yep, yeah. It's like a weird in-between where when you talk about it, just like at Fama, where the common folk, like they weren't starving, there wasn't like necessarily terrible things like this civil war. And everyone happening. was allowed to still just like wear their sword and Yeah, it was like a weird middle ground of like, is this okay for the common people, the day to day lives? It was were, confusing to say. It was say confusing the least. and yeah. It, yeah. It's tough. Yeah. Okay. So scene change. Yep. We enter with Jacob Carradine in the Silver Breezes lounge place. We get that his family members have been dying, like yeah. the Murdral promised, yep. because he hasn't located and killed Rand yet. I was going to ask you, because that those were the orders we saw him in the beginning of the Dragon Reborn. Yes. When he had to kill Rand as quick as possible, every month that passed, someone else would die. Yep. In his family. Okay. Yeah. And now two of them have died, but we haven't heard anything for two months. Yes. Okay. So, do we think that the Murdral and the Forsaken are being generous, or they've just, like, forgotten about him? Um, what do you think? I don't want to answer that. Forgotten. Forgotten? He's, like, mediocrely yeah, important. Yeah, they're like, oh, right, that guy hasn't killed Rand yet? Nope. Okay. All right. Find another family Well, it's member. also like, well, who's giving those orders? Yeah. And what has happened since the beginning of the Dragon Reborn? Yeah, and since then, I've learned a lot about Murdral sure. acting independently. Yeah. Two, right? Okay. Like, so maybe that Murdral was sort of like overstepping a little bit. Well, who also has died since the beginning of the Dragon Reborn? We had some major characters not make it through the Dragon Reborn. Not good guys, bad guys. Bad guys. Bilal? Sure. Baalzman. Well, that was your theory. Yeah. He's dead. Oh. And, and it's been a few months. Oh, and he's the one who wanted... No, well, okay. Okay, 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 okay. I mean, if the Fade was acting on Baal Zaman's orders oh, yeah. and it's been a couple of months since the last person got murdered, yeah. then is it because the okay. lineup of the end of the Dragon yeah. Reborn, right? Mm, maybe. So, hey. Maybe. So, you think he's off the hook? Oh. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, if the guy who gave the order just got killed. I don't know. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> Keridan gets to this place. He is on a floor where no one else is except for, like, the guests that he was expecting to be there. Yeah, yeah. And we get that the king of Tanchico is, or just Terabon? Is it the king of Terabon or Tanchico? Yeah. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. It's all Civil war right now. It's okay. Terabon, well, but, yeah. Well, he's King Andric, and he wants the children's help in restoring order in the city. Yeah. So he's secretly 
King Andrick. He's not supposed to be known that this guy is literally the king. Oh, no, I didn't say that. Yeah, right I know. Now. I'm just like clarifying. Okay. So Yeah, and I haven't got to the point where he's clearly here. Yeah, yeah. So we just get, in general, this meeting is about... The king. The king wanting the children's help. Yeah. And Carradine says, okay, well, I don't know if Pedro Nile would agree to this. And then he thinks... I know Pedro Nile would agree to totally. this. Totally. This and is And he would make the plan. sure the Terrebonners know who to thank and owe a debt to. Yeah. And we saw this Nile plan. Oh, all literally of it. the plan. It's the plan. Yeah. So this is the board meeting with everyone wearing funny animal masks, which I just have to say doesn't seem serious at all and seems like hilarious, like a child's birthday party. Yeah. Just like the leopard yeah, mask. Yeah. Leopard, <laughs> lion, owl. I'm a panda bear. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what's so funny? I was looking at party decorations. Okay. Because I'm starting to think about Hayden's birthday coming up. And uh, when I was at Walmart with him, he really liked, there's Paw Patrol face masks. Oh my God. And it's okay. all the characters of Paw Patrol with eyes cut out. And the kids can wear them around if you have like a Paw Patrol themed party. That's so good. And that's all I thought about while I was reading this. Yeah, that's so funny. I want all of these people to be wearing Paw Patrol masks. That is great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, we get a note here that the Panarch was killed and Carradine suspects the king of doing it. Yeah, so it's like they're going to put in a new Panarch, so the old one's Who the murdered. king is sleeping with. Yeah, Lady Amethera. Yes. And they're kind of maybe blaming it on the Dragon Sworn. Yeah, definitely. So that's the whole, yeah. Okay, so Carradine wants the king's assurances. Like, he doesn't want it to look like the children want power for themselves. It has to look like the king has really ordered this or requested it. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, the service to the light never ends. Yeah, we don't want any land or anything it's like that. It's just the it's light. Just the, the good stuff. The good stuff, sure. Yeah. So some other guy says, oh, I think we'll be able to hear from the king and give you that assurance. Yeah, and it's, very soon. And it's a guy wearing a mask that has a crown on yeah. it and yeah. he's clearly the king <laughs> no just <laughs> so the king the king is here the that's king's the guy here. and everyone clearly knows it it's not a secret anyway so now that that's all decided the children are gonna help restore order yeah the king wants that to happen this seems bad especially because keratin's in charge and he's also a dark friend and has ulterior motives yeah it's all bad it's bad for tanchico and terror but like it's all bad yeah, and it's you know, bad. Tom said there was terrible shit happening here. He did. And, and he is right. Yeah, and I mean, it's kind of good that him and Julian are, are tagging along here, so. Yeah, that's true, because if Elaine and Nynaeve here by themselves, oh man, they're just going to get themselves captured by the Shanshin. Yeah, and at least this way, Tom and Julian can probably rescue them again. Yeah, so. I just want them to Be self-sufficient. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I get that. Maybe now's the time. Yeah, I could see that happening. Maybe spending some time with the sea folk. Mature them. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe Nynaeve away from Egwene Will help. can help her focus on other things than just being like angry with Egwene. Yep. Yep. I don't know. Okay. Back to this though. Okay. Because Keratin leaves this place and he worries about getting his throat cut by a Madral because it's been two months since he heard news. We also get that he really hates poor people on the street. He does. Yep. Because poor people are disgusting. Disgusting, especially to him. Yep. And he's concerned about the dragon sworn and the dragon reborn because there are at least two bands of the dragon sworn in Eridamon and Terabon large enough to be called armies. And he is sure that one of those is sheltering Randall Thor. Yeah, so this is so funny how far off the mark he it's actually hilarious. is. It's hilarious. Like, he's supposed to be hunting down Rand, and Rand's in the friggin' Aiel waste right now, I know. becoming Kara well, Karn. after he got the took this, stone yeah. here. <laughs> and Carradine's like, oh, he's probably with one of these guys. Like, he literally got no news. And do you remember the whole Dragon Sworn thing, what, yep. what that deal is? Yeah, they're just people who support the dragon. Yeah, there's yeah. like all those and a bunch of Rand lookalikes who are being murdered. Yeah. It's all, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> so, Keratin gets back to wherever he lives here, and there's a woman in his room. Ooh, okay. And it's yeah. Leandrin, and now this is where <laughs> finally something interesting happens. Did you pick up that it was Leandrin right away? Oh, yes. Okay. Honey-colored braids. Yeah, I just... Rosebud lips. Checking. Evil bitch. Yeah. 
She's the one. So, Tanchico was a real plan after all. Yeah. Hey, how about this? I feel like I've said this. I I think you did. I think you did. You know what I said? Both plans are real. Both plans are real. And right. it happened. And both plans have been executed from what we know. Yeah. Yeah. I think there, there was more than one plan and I was right about that. Which makes sense. Like you're trying to conquer the world. You don't just have like one plan at a time. Yeah. And you tell different people different plans. Who are going to be a part of them or whatever. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So she calls him Boars and he thinks that she is here to kill him for not killing Rand. Yep. And she uses her pain power on him. Yeah. Well, he tries to go for her throat. Yeah. He tries to kill her. So she uses the pain power. And now he knows that she is Black Aja. Yep. And we get this as confirmation of her being at the Dark Friend Social. Yeah, that would make sense. But also, how does she know that his name was Bors? Well, he calls himself Bors. Yeah. And it's like that he's the guy. The fact that he had a fake name for himself leads me to believe that he talked to some people gotcha okay right yeah that makes sense because if you're not going to talk to anyone and you're not going to share your name why do you you come up with a fake name come up with a fake name (laughs) in your brain for nothing yeah i don't know and there's probably more than one i don't know it doesn't matter moving on okay turns out she isn't here to kill him she just wants the white cloaks to take control of the panarch circle yeah which he... The palace, yeah. The palace. The palace. Right, whatever. I don't care. Well... The, the circle is like the Colosseum thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Whatever. So, <laughs> he thinks that he can't just send, like, the Panarch soldiers away from the Panarch's palace because Amarethia and Andric will Ooh. turn <laughs> the Legion on him. I know, it's crazy. Oh, man. Okay. Will turn the Legion on him and... She just says that the Panarch will be dealt with. Yeah, so like Amethera. Like the new one, I guess, because the Panarch was already dealt with. Yeah, so <laughs> old Panarch died, new Panarch Amethera is going to be put in soon, yeah. who's like sleeping with the king, Yeah, and it maybe be a king plan. And it's yeah. good that he's already supposed to be going in to help, but then, so like, this is the weird thing, the plans kind of align with each other well here's the thing he's having a lot of like conflicting thoughts yeah about this because he's like i can sort of do this but he's a white cloak who's a dark friend and like this is a lot of hard work he's got allegiances that's like which one takes precedence it's like obviously the bad one but how do i not get killed by anybody yeah and so she tells him her name and then calls him her dog and leaves exactly all right now we get a scene change this is an interesting progression in this chapter. Yeah. Because it's like characters pass each other on the street. Yeah. And then it's like the camera, the camera follows the new switches person. and follows a new person. I love it. Yeah. And I do feel like in these perspectives, a lot of it is just like character building of stuff that we already kind of knew. I agree. Yeah. All right. So scene change to Leandrin. We enter with her leaving this place. Yeah. There's a guard there and she stabs him in the eye. Which is like, okay. And she leaves, which was gruesome. Little jarring? The, yeah, very jarring. The I like could feel it. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it's one of those, it was yeah. so descriptive. Like I had to like blink my eye. And like, like, whoa, oh. did she just totally stab this dude in the face? Yeah. And yes. And yeah, not just the did. face. And it's so that there's no blood and he just like collapses. Oh, it's anyway. Okay. Moving on. We get an interesting note about how yellows, who are really good at healing, yeah, are also really good at killing with the power. Well, these yellows. Yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. Not just like yellows in general. No, it's interesting that killing with the power is so close to healing with the power. Yeah, I mean, That's it kinda, what I mean. It kind of makes sense, the medicine too, right? Yeah, because she says like you any can like, doctor, stop someone's heart, make yeah. someone's blood boil, whatever. Like the little like, shocker dudes that zap you back to life. The paddles. Yes. If you do that when your heart is beating. Defibrillator. It's going to kill you. Like, it's oh, bad. It's probably so. not great. <laughs> anyway, it's just an interesting note. Yeah. So she heads back to where all the others, 11 Black Aja. Because the two... Dead. Well, left in tear, yeah. Tongues nailed to a door, dead. They're died. Yeah, well, they dead died. We assume, okay. Anyway, so they're all staying here. We get a side note that Leandrin grew up poor, which contributes to her wanting all the power and money. 
Yeah, and to not be a poor person, but also hating poor people. Yes. It's like so, like she's terrible. She needs some therapy. Because she's like a total asshole so to, like, to that cleaning lady. Yeah, she, some serving girl disrespects her, so she yells at her. Yeah. It's like, hey. Yeah. All right. So I also find this whole scene a little bit funny because Leandrin enters and it's where all the other, or some of the others are. Yeah. There's a couple others who aren't there. Yeah. Even though that serving lady said they were all there. They're not all They're there. They're not all here. Ugh. And I have to tell you how funny I find the idea of a brown Aja being black Aja. Why? It doesn't make sense in my brain. <laughs> I can't make the two fit together. Yeah, no, I get it. Because dark friends all sort of fit one profile. It's like, what's your motivation? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think of like spacey browns yeah. as super power hungry. Yeah, no, I get that. It's it, like, what's, yeah. It's I, like, why? What happened? I don't. You know why? Why? They have better books in the restricted section. Oh, nice. Oh. That's even, I don't know. It just seems. Okay. That was just, a Harry Potter reference if you didn't notice. Yeah, I noticed. That was great. Oh. I feel like I get bonus points for that. Okay, that deserves a shot. Yep. Back with shot glasses. We have the same shot glass. From Victoria. Yeah, Victoria, BC. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. To the restricted section. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, uh. She burns. That was whiskey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, uh, okay. Spacey Browns are not power hungry. Yep. That's my note here. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we get... A plethora of descriptions. We do, of a lot of stuff. Of all these women. Yeah, we're not going to go through those, I okay. assume. The only one I wanted to talk about was Jeannie. What's her name? Jeannie? Yeah, Jeannie Cade. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find it. Oh my god, okay. Gildan? No, that's the serving lady. Oh, okay. How would you say that? I have no idea. Jeannie. <laughs> Janie. 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 Anyway. She's described as scantily clad. Yeah. Super low cut, slim fitting. Fantastic. Dress. And I have to say, this is probably the other Black Aja from the Dark Friend Social. Oh, okay. Because we got a- Super low cut. And Jake and Carradine was like, ugh. Ugh, gross. Yeah. Boobs. Boobs. Hate them. Those <laughs> boobs out. Disgusting. She's not even trying to hide where she's from. But it's like, hey. And it was Eridomen. Yeah. And this- Chick is from Eridomen. So there you go. Yeah. I like that. Good connecting dots. I love puzzle pieces. That's fantastic. Just doing the puzzles. Yep. Lady with her boobs out. So <laughs> Leandrin announces that the White Cloaks will hold the Panarch's palace. I wrote circle, but it's palace. Yep. They all laugh at the thought that Keridin has been instructed to kill Rand. Yes. Because they've all just been told... To hold him and bind him and control him. Yeah. If he can be controlled. Yeah, and I guess that kind of lines up with the whole prediction of something in Tanchico to hurt Rand or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that was the whole deal. Yeah. So these Black Aja are assuming that there are disagreements between the Forsaken because... Different dark friends are clearly getting different orders. Yeah, and they're all going to get crushed between all of them. Yeah, what good are promises that they will rule the world when the Dark Lord returns if they're just going to be crushed by warring Forsaken? Yeah, yeah. And they're like, I don't know, why don't we just bail fire them all? Boom, boom, because they have a magic wand that shoots bail fire, turns, turns out. out. Yeah, yeah. that's a real thing. Yeah, a uh, Terangriel. yeah. That can produce it. A and bale fire terangrial. Apparently it didn't go well. That no one can use or control. <laughs> but they have it. They have it. Yeah. Yeah. It's really funny, the whole vying for power amongst them. And it just reminds me of that time Ishamael was talking with his, like, you know, pawns or whatever you want to call them. And he was like, ah, if you guys don't figure it out in this lifetime, then we'll get it. In, we'll get him in the next lifetime. And they were like, what? what? I, thought, I thought it was supposed to be like this lifetime. So there Wasn't was like, that with Boris? Uh, Wasn't that at the Dark Friends Social? It could have been, but I think he did it again, too. Oh, yeah, maybe. I think he did that a few times. So anyways, it's just like a funny thing where they're yeah. like, oh, my God, we're going to be crushed. But yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah. yeah. 
So Leandrin says that all they need is to control the Dragon Reborn, and then they will have the most power, even yeah. over the Forsaken, which is an interesting perspective, Leandrin. Yeah, interesting plan. Yeah. So Eldrith the Brown, uh-huh. yeah. who's also Black Aja, yep. has been looking for clues of how to control Rand in parchments, but they can't get much from the king's library. That's why you have brown sisters. They need to do the research. Yeah, Evil but research. I know. You get black sisters from the brown by giving them grants because they don't get funding otherwise. Interesting. Fund education. Otherwise, the teachers will turn into <laughs> their <laughs> side. Yes. No? Okay. Yeah, maybe. I just don't see it. I just don't get it. The personalities don't match up. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. So... There's a Terangrio in the Panarch's palace yep. that can be used to control him in yep. the exhibition room or in the Panarch's collection, Yeah, but that is not new information to them. No. But I think that that's probably, that's where Egwene was in Dreamworld, right? With the giraffe, yeah. With all she was the, in the exhibition With room. all the stuff. Yeah, do you remember what was there? Yeah, the weird- Do we want to go back to that chapter and like look? Nope. Okay. We don't get time for that. We have time for it. Okay, what is it? It's like the the guy, the half thing holding the hand, right? So it's... That's the evil and pain thing, probably? Yeah, so the same type of statues that Rand saw in Ruidian. Yes. The little statues, but it was a broken one. Yeah. And when she touched it, it was like pain and badness. Needles. Yeah. Badness. And there was that other thing that she saw was the collar and two bracelets of dull black metal and they met, made her shiver and felt darkness and pain associated with them. Old, old pain and sharp. Okay. Yeah. So there's a few things. There's a lot of things it could be. And there was also that whole Mercedes-Benz hood ornament. Yeah, I was going to say, it's not that. It might be. <laughs> okay. So Leandrin thinks that they're going to put Randall Thor on a leash. And at this point, before we get the next perspective. Sure. I think that Aginin is somehow working with these ladies, oh. collecting Adam, Ooh, and okay. they're going to put one on Ram. Gotcha. Okay. Because those that's how the Shanshin control women who can channel. But you, we already know what happens when they put them on men. Who can channel? Yeah. They die. Oh. That was the whole game that they literally put the I thought the they just put them on men. In, well, they do as a fun, fun as a fun game, and some men just die and go crazy, and sometimes the man and the woman both die. Oh, that was like the fun game that they play in the court okay. palaces, where it's like so, sometimes just the man go, goes crazy and dies with the collar, and sometimes the woman who is holding the leash too, both of them die. Okay, so not that probably. Well, maybe, but no, like, how does not. it work for <laughs> Randall? I said because I said, oh, something to do with the Adam, and then I put in brackets, nope, lol. Because I don't actually think that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just the thing because of the whole put him on a leash. Yeah. Yeah. I get you that. Know? And then this is like quite literally a leash. Yeah. So. It could be like a play I on I wonder that, if though. Leandrin doesn't know. She, they might not know that. Like they might have a plan and not. I doubt it. I really doubt that. But okay. it doesn't matter. Okay. So we got our scene change back to Aginin. Yep. Which I like it. Full circle. Back chapter. to her, yeah. And that's why I asked, like, do you think she's a dark friend? It's ah, like we got so I much know. of we her. We got so much that could have linked her to a dark friend. But you're right, in her own brain, like, yeah. she doesn't think about anything of, like, ooh, the great lord or dark Nothing. lord. Or, like, none of that stuff. No. Yeah. No, no, no. So she arrives back home and finds that someone has broken in and is waiting for her. And this guy is some um, seeker of the truth guy. Yeah, we know them. From the Shanchen. He is from the Tower of Ravens yep. and has ravens tattooed on him as a symbol of imperial justice. Yes. Yeah. They're like the super guys who can do any, go anywhere. Even though they're property. They're property. Yeah. They're property, it's but weird, yeah. it's still like you have to obey. He could literally order her to go buy the bond, like the rope to tie yourself up and then he could torture her and he would expect her to like listen to what he tells her to do. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And then also this note about these ravens and the tower of the ravens. Yeah. I just connect it back to Matt who okay. has a raven spear now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His yeah. sword spear has ravens on it. Yep. That's true. And he's also fated to marry the daughter of Nine Moon. 
which is also a Shan Chen thing. Yes, daughter of the nine moons. Of the nine moons. It's important, but sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I think that I just say Matt question mark. And yeah. that's all I have there. I mean, we don't have anything else because we know he's no, fated it just, to marry the daughter No, I think that the, the whole Nines. Ravens thing connects him even further to po- potentially Sean Chen. That makes And it's a weird take because clearly with the Randland, Ravens equals bad. Yeah. Spies for the Dark Spies One, all that one. bad stuff. And then the Sean Chen is like if Ravens Imperial are like... Imperial justice. Yeah, if they're your symbol, then they are not the same. Yes. So... Agreed. Interesting take. Yeah. Okay. So, this guy serves the High Lady Suroth. And the Koren, Korean? The return. The return. Yeah. The returning people, right? Yeah, that was their whole deal. Yeah. So he is checking up on the progress of things here, and he received passage from Bale Dolman. Our favorite And I just think, captain. what's up with that guy? What's he up to? Making money? Yeah. Smuggling people in? I wonder if in? he's run into Gelb here. <laughs> well, Glenn? Gelb. Gelb. God. But that's a good question, because Gelb left her right before he came in. So it's like they left mm. on a bad note too, but Dolman would also recognize Gelb for sure. Mm. Anyway, so the Suldam, after the Battle of Falma, like scattered or ran away, deserted. Yeah, so that's important. Or they were left behind. That That's really important though, because yeah. like you can kind of assume not all the Shanchen, not just Suldam, but like a bunch of the Shanchen got left behind. Yes. Some people went, a lot of people are still probably here. And they have to like, you know, figure out what yeah, they're doing. Go undercover just like she is. Yeah. So. Yeah. But at least Suroth is clearly sending people to like find the lost Sean Chen. Yeah. Like working like, on it slowly. Yeah. So. So Aginan's mission is to find these deserters and return them to Suroth. So now it's the connection to the women that Gelb is looking for. Yes. It's clearly not Nynaeve and Elaine. Nope. They've just arrived. They've just arrived. And this is what they're doing. And return them or kill them. Yeah. So this guy's upset. There's no coffee here. And he wants a really (laughs) strong tea. Yeah. So Close enough. Yeah. She has to sketch maps of Tanchico and stuff for this guy. Everything that she's learned. Yeah. And then send the Adam back to Suroth by courier boat. Yeah. But she's already done this before. So it's almost like... He's like punishing her because she questioned him too much. And like pulled a crossbow on him and all that stuff. So he leaves and she checks her locked basement Uh where she has a captured prisoner. So this is really interesting because we know that she is supposed to be searching for Suldan. And she's got one. She got one. And then after she found this one, she stopped looking. Yeah. She doesn't want to find anymore. No. So this woman is a Suldan. She's in a dirty dress in the basement. Her name is... Bethamin. Yeah. And she pleads to be freed. She says that they've known each other for 10 years. This is all a big mistake. But she has the Suldam around her neck. And so Aguinas... The Adam. Yes. Yeah. The Adam. What did I say? The Adam is around the Suldam's neck. Cool. Yeah, that's what I meant. So Aguinas says, I will take it off you if you bring it over to me. Yep. But she can't. know how that goes. Uh Aha. So a little bit of a recap about the Demane and the Suldam and the Adam. Except for the fact that this one, she found out that Bethamin could be held like this by mistake. Yes. This yes. isn't yes. one yes. of the yes. ones that got Good like call. found from Egwene. Yeah. Yeah, that whole deal. Right. The ones who were like I forgot captured. forgot about that, yeah. This is like an accident that she put the collar on to like hold her for a second for like whatever reason. To like literally hold her like a dog. Exactly. Yeah. And then it's like, oh shit. Does this collapse everything about the Shan Shan Empire? And it does. It does. You're right. <laughs> but that's what she's starting to think because she's like, how high up does this go? Yeah. Like the blood are involved or the seekers involved is the crystal throne involved in this big scandal. Yeah. This is big. It's huge. And is Suroth somehow tied to this? Yes. Why is she asking me to find the Suldam and the Adam? Well, because like, Suroth, we got learned from those two who were she's got them she's got them and yeah. she learned that information yeah which is big so like how high up does it go mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's good that she's putting it together for herself i like yes. that yeah so we also get that the shanchen don't believe that the demonic or women who can channel are even people property yeah their Dogs, property their animals it, so. that need to be trained yeah and the whole system for finding women yeah go out find the women who have the spark and then 
that same system finds the women who have the quote ability yes. to become Suldam. Yeah. So, so it's like if you have the spark, you're Damani. If you're so, it clearly goes up yeah. quite high. Well, and that's the interesting thing is like you don't necessarily know if they know because there's a distinction. People and th- th- that's the reason why there's so many more Suldam than Damani because we know that people who have the spark who like are gonna channel no matter what. Yeah. Are fewer. So those are the Damani. But we also know there are people who can learn. Can to learn, and that means that those are probably the Suldam. Because those are the people who can learn so they could like hold the leash and there's a lot more of them. And there's like this one. Yeah. Clearly shocked and surprised by this. Yeah. Always thought that when she had the collar on or the bracelet on or whatever. Yeah. Probably she's channeling through the person and thinks that this is just how things feel. Yeah. Maybe they, maybe yeah. some of them probably connect the dots and figure it out. Definitely, and, and then there's like some. Secret. Oh, for sure, because like I don't want to become. But this one yeah. seems to be like this is a mistake. I don't yeah. know what's happening. It's like you block that out of your mind, and that's we kind of got that right from the from the get go too with the Chan Chen, where it's like the Soul Dam can learn when other women are channeling, even if they don't hold the leash. Yeah, like that should be your first big clue. Yeah, if you know the magic. But they system. don't know the magic system exactly. Well, so, some of them probably do. Some of them probably do. Some of them probably don't. Yeah. So it's like, what's that? How high up does it actually go? Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so there's also an interesting tidbit about Aginan thinking it's strange that the people here did not collect and control their women who can channel. Yeah. Like, why did that not happen here? And she's been figuring out that the Suldam can channel. Like, oh my God, does Surath even know? This is bad news bears. What's a girl to do? Yeah, I do like the fact that she ends on the fact that she's not going to let herself get murdered by the Seeker. She's like, I'm still out for myself. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So. As far as Shanshan go, who keep people locked in their basements. Exactly. As far. The redeeming quality is she doesn't want to just let herself get murdered for knowing too much. Okay. Fair. It, it's an interesting plot point. It is. That's yeah. for sure. I like it. So. All right. And for two chapters that were, I think, the two longest side by side in the book. Oh, yeah. Not like, bad. Not not terrible. Not a lot of inf- like information. Yes. Yeah. But could, we got into the perspective of a lot of people, so that's nice. Yeah, I'm just yeah. looking forward to moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what we didn't talk about, how much of a dick Jacob Carradine is, because when he was like, oh my God, don't kill me yet. I've got so much more extended family you I've can murder I've got my first. sisters. I can tell you where my sister is. Yeah, I've got yeah. cousins. I've got nephews. I've got nieces. That's true. Like, yeah, it's like, you can go right to I hell, buddy. I didn't think we needed to talk about how much more of a dick he was. I felt like we In understood. case we weren't sure. I just, I forgot to talk about it. I wanted to mention it. Yeah, and then also how Leandrin... <laughs> Put him to like tears, crying like a little baby on the floor. Yeah. That was a little redeeming. A little bit. So, yeah. and it's like, well, why are we cheering for Leandra to do that to him? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. See? Confusing. I like, I like the sassiness of the serving girl who like comes into Leandrin's place after she already got yelled at. Yeah. To like, and he's like, you told me to clean, so I'm cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> and then she gets given the cat. Yeah. She's like, cut the lamb up for the cat. Yeah. 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 Small bits. Yeah. Anyway. He's got no teeth. He's so old. <laughs> okay. We got to end this. Yes. Okay. I'm going to say that this is part of the pattern now. Yeah. It's part of the pattern. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. The Wheel Weaves is hosted by Danny and Brett, edited by Danny, produced by Danny and Brett with Passion Socks, Mozime, Moltude, Benjamin, Vince Lewick, Michelle O'Brien, Sarah Wyatt, Jamie Young, Cody Fouts, and Giannis. With music by Audionautics.com. If you're interested in some of our Wheel Weaves merchandise, such as shot glasses, frosty mugs, t-shirts, hats, and more, you can head over to newcreationsbygen.com, and we are located in the groups or collections section. If you're interested in supporting us and helping us to make really great content, you can head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash thewheelweavespodcast, and you'll also get access to some really great bonus content like early Early access to our regular episodes, bonus episodes, unedited video episodes, access to our live recordings, monthly Q&As, and more like stickers and keychains. 
Don't forget to find us on social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter at The Wheel Weaves Podcast. We'd also love for you to join the conversation over at our Discord, and you can find the link to that in our bios on those social medias. We'd love for you to tell a friend about us. Referrals really are the best compliment. We'd love for you to leave a review and subscribe. That really does make a huge difference. Thanks so much again for listening. This really is part of the pattern now.